Hello out there. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Chris Hess, and prior to Range Life tonight, I am truly honored to be able to host Alejandro Escovedo here live in our studio. How are you doing today? Great. It's really great to have you here. We're going to, uh, before tonight's show over at the Neurolux, uh, Alejandro has has offered to come over and talk to us a little and play some songs. So uh, he's got some some folks in there with him. You I wanna... do. On my left here, which you can't see on the radio, but he is on my <laughs> left, on bass, guitar, and vocals is Kimon Kirk uh, from Boston and living in Los Angeles. And then on my right, a gentleman we played together over the years. He played on Man Under the Influence, an album I did on Bloodshot with Chris Stamey and all those guys, Mitch Easter and everybody. And... Uh, this is Eric Haywood, everyone, on uh, acoustic guitar. All right. Well, uh, what, are, what are you going to play for us now? We're going to play uh, one off the new album. It's called Waiting for Me. Awesome. All right. All right. Wrote her a letter with the working man's pen. I always believed her when she cried. No more excuses, the hours are long. Ah, she, she's waiting with a red dress on. So if you see her, please tell her I blew her a kiss. It will be landing when the wind shifts. No, 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 please don't disturb her. She's waiting for me. She's waiting for me. I'm the only one. Many diversions when a boy turns a man. Maybe there's choices and maybe, maybe there's plans. Outside her window, the world turns again. Inside her room, it's a distant land. So if you see her, please tell her I blew her a kiss. It will be landing when the wind shifts. No, 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 please don't disturb her. She's waiting for me. She's waiting for me. I'm the only one. The hours alone I hear she's waiting with a red dress on Thank you Would you like one more? Yeah Before if we you, talk a little bit? Sure, yeah Alright, this one's called one more Something is always Blue good. Another one off that the crossing. Okay? Awesome. Great. Right. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Wind blew my friend away. 
He flew away yesterday The government lies, children died They still won't feed the poor Is there money to be made Off the people's parade They're selling broken hearts outside the door So I'll write something blue A melody I'll play for you And I'll sing Yes, I'll sing something blue You claim a victory Like a hurricane memory St. James is hanging in the breeze We turn another cheek In velvet armor chic We sing for the workers of tomorrow So I'll write Something blue, a melody I'll play for you, and I'll sing, yes, I'll sing something blue. Nobody wants you, something blue. Maybe you'll turn to something blue. Maybe they'll see what the people need today. Let everybody say, hey, hey. Another smoky rainy day, the magpies flown away. Searching for love lost along the way. If this beginning has no end, let the one man band begin. There's always time to tell another story. So I'll write something blue, a melody I'll play for you. And I'll sing, yes, I'll sing something blue. Something blue Something blue Yeah, I'll play for you Oh, something blue Alejandro Escovedo. Thank you. Theo. And pals. <laughs> <laughs> Performing here in studio at, uh, at the uh, Radio Boise KRBX studio. It is, that was fantastic. Both new songs off the new record, yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah, and, yeah. they're both off the last album called The Crossing. It's an album I, I made in Italy with an all-Italian band, Don Antonio, they're called. And, Don Antonio. Uh, yeah. We spent a month in Italy writing the record and, and uh, recording. And it was when, amazing. When did you connect with this with Don Antonio? About two years ago, I was uh, to tour Europe, and uh, I did not have a band at the time, and so I was given the option to play with three different bands. Two were English, hmm. one was Italian, and I chose the Italians. Their their sound is really amazing. It's a uh, kind of like this Ennio Marconi soundtrack music, oh. Italian soundtrack with uh, '60s surf. You know, '60s. It's funny because. They don't try to sound like an American rock banner, and they stick very true to their Italian thing. Hmm. And rock and roll to them isn't like it is for It's not like Chuck Berry and stuff. It's more like 60s twist music. It's what huh. it is from all those Italian movies when Monica Vitti was uh, twisting in those films. You know? oh, that's, so, a, that's a so fun take. Yeah, on it's really cool, and it's wonderful music. And it's got a little kind of avant-garde touch to it, too. Huh. So it's very interesting. And so we decided to write... Uh, 
a record that was a story, you know, and it's the stories about two young boys. One's Italian, his name is Salvo, he's from southern Italy. The other boy's a Mexican boy from uh, Saltillo in the state of Coahuila. Hmm. And they meet while they're uh, working in a kitchen in uh, Galveston, Texas. And then huh. they go on a journey looking for uh, rock and roll, punk rock America as they see it, you know. Yeah. And they come across a lot of uh, adversity and uh, kind of... Uh, or uh, surprised and somewhat broken by what they find. You know? Yeah, yeah. And there's a, there's, uh, I take it there's a lot of your own story. Absolutely. In this record, yeah. through these you know, it's funny characters. because I thought that kind of getting away from you know where I'm accustomed to writing in Texas and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, and then uh, I thought that it would allow me to really get into the character, but it, surprisingly, it actually brought out more myself within the character and also the italian boys based very much on on antonio gramantieri yeah. who's the, the the my co-writer you know yeah and you know so a lot of it was like for him it was like the first time he came to america he came to texas to austin to uh his favorite uh, musician is jimmy vaughn you ah. know? so he came to see the blues in austin you know and traveled throughout they were just young kids like 16 17 years old you know huh. And for me, I think I, I, I put a lot of not only my own experiences uh, growing up in Southern California and, and, you know, and Texas in the 50s and the 60s, but uh, also what I've uh, experienced as a musician since, you know, uh, the late mid-70s. Yeah. yeah. So you, yeah, you went to Italy and worked with an Italian band to mm -hmm. produce a deeply American yeah. record. I mean, you dig into some deep issues and problems that are going on here through these characters and it, it's actually kind of takes me back a, a back a little bit to see that you did this somewhere else because it's it goes so deep you know what's funny is that i think that going to italy really kind of as a writer you know, it freed me somehow mm. i suddenly became liberated of all time and space and environment and everything so i was able to really dig a lot deeper and really say things I've never said before in songs. I've hinted at these things because I've always written about immigration because of my yeah. father's story, right? Mm -hmm. But I never really kind of talked about the, the experiences I have had in my life. And um, like Real Navidad, the one where he uh, Diego meets a, an ex-Texas uh, uh, Ranger, yeah. all of that was... Th those things really happened to me. And then... Uh, we gave it to Willie Vlotten of Richmond Fontaine oh, to flesh yeah. out. Yeah. So he fleshed it out. And then Freddie Trujillo, who was uh, the bass player in Richmond Fontaine, did the narrative. You know, oh, they did a nice. great job. They both did an amazing job. Yeah. I didn't know there was a connection there. Yeah, we're big Willie Vlotten oh, fans. Oh, we love Willie. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, I great. love Willie. He's amazing. Hmm. So he, he wrote, he fleshed it out and really made this wonderful narrative out of it. You know, We were lucky because we had... Uh, James Williamson of the Stooges played on Teenage Luggage, just the next song we're going to play for you. And then um, we had Peter Parrott and John Perry of The Only Ones on Waiting For Me, the song we just played, uh, yeah. or the first song we played. And uh, uh, we had Wayne Kramer of the MC5 on yeah. Sonica USA. Uh, and we had yeah, Joe something. Ely came. You know, it was, it was pretty amazing. Nice. Yeah. yeah. When I, yeah, when I'm listening to this record, I was struck by the stories, and I can't help but wonder, from the writing perspective, like, are these characters here to dig into these issues, or do these issues arise because you're telling stories from the perspective of these characters, or does that even matter? Is this just, does it all just come together? When we chose to write the story, we knew that there would be issues that we would have to deal with, mm -hmm. right, and that people would perceive it more as a story about immigration. Mm -hmm. And it is that because it's they come from to, other, right yeah now, they come right. from other places and our experiences have been that you know yeah. and so um, but I think that for them the boys I think ultimately Antonio and I wanted to write like a timeless piece right and so the boys really are about the story is really about the boys' youth and wonderment at life and music. Mm -hmm. and how they feel American punk rock music can change their lives, and they will find some sort of universal community within that, you know. Mm. So it's really about being young in a way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to ask you, I'm dying to ask you, so you left Austin not too long ago. Right. Four um, years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
and there's a story there and I, I'm I'm wondering like how that came to pass and also how has that how has that affected your your art, your creative process, just kind of the way you well, conduct your career? You know, a lot of things happened in those four years. I yeah. left Austin grudgingly. I did not want to leave, but my wife, Nancy, uh, got a job in a film hmm. in Dallas. So we, we thought we are going for six months and then we'd be back in Austin. But it turned out that once we got to Dallas, we realized that Austin had changed so much from when we were... You know, I got there in 1980. She got there in 90. Mm. You know, so it had changed quite drastically, yeah. and and just kind of felt more comfortable in this place in Dallas, where there was uh, a lot of diversity racially and culturally. You're and in a cool spot. There yeah. was a lot. Yeah, and I, we lived in this wonderful hotel, the Belmont Hotel. Yeah, and um, so we met a lot of great people. We were able. You know, I got. I, I, I uh, took medicine that allowed me to uh, finally get rid of hep hepatitis C mm -hmm. while I was at, there in Dallas. And also, I wrote two albums while I was in Dallas, mm -hmm. you know. So it was great acoustically, but we are, we are leaving. We're moving to a town outside of Austin now, about 40 miles, you know, oh. out in the hill country. Nice. Yeah. I kind of feel like it's time for the country again. Time for the hill yeah, country. Yeah, 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 that's a good move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could ask you about 11 billion more questions, but I would love to hear another song. Okay. Well, this one's Teenage Luggage, and this one is uh, the boys traveling through uh, Texas on their way to Los Angeles, and they encounter a very compassionate cowboy. Joe is his name, and uh, I fashioned him after Joe Ely, you know, and then, uh, <laughs> uh, and then they meet a, a police officer that's not as kind. But we'll, we'll play it for you. All right, here's all the right, As ferociously as we can with acoustic guitars. All right. Ready? <laughs> Two, three, four. I got my teenage luggage, I'm headed out. Looking for America in a record shop Outside of Lubbock, we got picked up By a cowboy named Joey, had a hole in his luck Santa Fe's a punk with a troubled past Sitting like a diva in a holding tank There's a fire in the underground Skins are on the run Eastside boys have been here They'll never disappear What the heck? You think you know me? No, you don't know me You'll never know me, no You think you know me? You'll never know me. You're just a bigot with a fat guitar. It's raining trouble in America. Salvo fell in love. Italian love is centuries, Italian love is blood. Love can be a junkie, love can be a jewel. Love can be a pyramid, Salvo was a fool. What the great fool? You think you know me? No, you don't know me. You'll never know me, no! You think you know me? You'll never know me. You're just a bigot with a fat guitar.
Outside of Yuma, we got picked up By a trigger-happy Johnny with a facial scar America's beautiful, America's ill America's a blood stain in a honky-tonk kill One, two, three, four! Think you know me no, you don't know me, you'll never know me, no. You think you know me, you'll never know me, or just a bigot with a bad guitar. Alejandro Escovedo, once again. That song's from the new record? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh... Do I have to let you go? No. No? No. There's people waiting for you. I don't mind making them wait. <laughs> uh, you know, there's there's a thing that I have to ask you, and it, I was struck when I when I walked into the room and you were you were sitting outside the door of the studio, and yeah. I wonder like if you know you've you've been touring for a while, you've made a lot of music in your life. Uh, I would think that people expect wisdom from you. Oh, they came to, the <laughs> they came to the wrong place. They definitely came to the wrong place. I suspect there's a lot <laughs> gathered in there. I mean, how is, when you think about how long you've been on the road, first yeah. I'm dying to know, like, what are your plans? Are you going to keep, you're going to keep touring? You're going to keep. I've been on the road 45 years, I think, something yeah. like that, close to it anyway. And um, this tour is my last really long tour. Mm. You know? I'm, I plan on still playing still making records i'm writing a book a memoir oh nice and um working on different projects but i'm really not uh, prepared to keep you know at it the way we've been doing it where we've played you know 200 shows a year or something like yeah. that you know so it's time to kind of put my feet up a little bit and think about things and figure out where to go next um I think moving to the country is a good move. It'll allow me some solitude. And um, I really want to get into, like, you know, I, I, I believe that The Crossing could be a movie, a play, some sort of, you know, Feels multimedia like event of some kind, you know. So maybe if I did something like that, it would be great to, to write it as a play or, mm. or a theater presentation and, and then go out on the road with that, you know, something like that. That's putting your feet up. Yeah. That sounds yeah. like work, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 the kind of thing, you know, when you've been doing it this long, there's a certain thing that happens to all these musicians, you know, as you do it more and more, it just becomes part of you, you know. Hmm. And so when, let's say you're not, a, you're like when I was sick, you know, in 2003, mm -hmm. the fear of not knowing what I was going to do next was greater, or, you know, the fact if that music was still gonna I be wasn't an getting up in the morning and going and playing. You right. Know? That was more frightening than anything. Hmm. Yeah, so you got to keep motion is everything I believe in life. You know, you got to keep moving forward, and, hmm. and I will. But uh, I'm just not going to be the road dog. I'm not going to be hammering the yeah, road yeah, for two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've done I've done my fair share. I think you know. And has it changed a lot? Has that world of touring? It's I mean, very much. It's changed very much. It's changed. Uh, everything's changed. The record industry has changed. Uh, the radio uh, industry yeah. has changed. Uh, you know, uh, the internet has provided people with access to uh, everything, right? So going out to see a live band is not top priority anymore. Mm. Right? Whereas when I was a kid, it was all we lived for, yeah. you know, was to go see a live band, you know? Yeah, it was wonderful to go buy the records, but if we could go see whoever, The Who or Dr. John or... Right. You know, whoever it was amazing, you know. So yeah. I don't know that we still, still have is. that kind of thing. Still it still is. is. No, yeah. it's still the experience is still there. Yeah. I'm just not so sure that people are uh, willing as willing as they once were, you know. Yeah. The options I got the they got so many options. It's know? true. And money's scarce these days, so you know. Yeah. You want us to do one more song for I you? I would love one yeah. more song. That'd be fantastic. So so I, I know that you lived in Austin during the 90s, right? I did. You wrote for the Chronicle. All right. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Austin's changed, it's true. Show me what has it. Tonight the TV's throwing 
colors on the wall. As I watch the cities of the world reduced to ashes from where I sit at the bottom of the world. Yeah, there used to be a phone booth down here on every corner. Call me up just to say my name. Oh, but now all anybody gets is a busy signal. No, you can't call home from the bottom of the world. He said, hey, newspaper boy, don't you think? time you delivered I said say the word your wish is my command you know she ran me over like an 18 wheeler and dumped my body at the bottom of the
good. That was fantastic. Bottom of the world, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Alejandro Escovedo, thank you so much for yeah. coming, for your grace and your wisdom and your music. Kimon and, and Eric. And, and, and Hector, Eric. Hector Munoz is on drums tonight. Also. Tonight yeah, and yeah. tonight playing at the Neurolux with yes, Casey Neal opening yeah. up, Portland Casey's artist great. who's yeah. joining you on the road. He's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Please come and see him. We yeah. will. Thank you so much for coming. Right. Alejandro Escovedo, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very See much. See you at the Narlux. Ciao.